beginning at verse 1. A prayer of Habakkuk the prophet upon Shigionoth. O Lord, I have heard your speech and was afraid. O Lord, revive your work in the midst of the years. In the midst of the years, make known. In wrath, remember mercy. God came from Teman. You ever heard anybody ask the question, well, where did God come from? Well, it tells us right here, God came from Teman. And you know what that means? Nothingness. God was there before there was anything that existed. God came from Teman, the Holy One from Mount Paran. Selah. His glory covered the heavens, and the earth was full of His praise. His brightness was as bright as the light. He had horns coming out of His hand, And there was the hiding of His power. Before Him went pestilence, and burning coals were at His feet. He stood, He measured the earth, He beheld, He drove asunder the nations, the everlasting mountains were scattered, the perpetual hills did bow. His ways are everlasting. I saw the tents of Cushan in affliction, and the curtains of the land of Midian did tremble. Was the Lord displeased against the rivers? Was your anger against your rivers? Was your wrath against the sea that you did ride upon your horses and your, the chariots of your salvation? The bow was made quite naked according to the oath of the tribes, even your word. Selah. You did cleave the earth with rivers. The mountains saw you and they trembled. The overflowing of water passed by. The deep uttered his voice and lifted up his hands on high. The sun and the moon stood still in their habitation. At the light of your arrows they went and at the shining of your glittering spear. You did march through the land in indignation. You did thresh the heathen in anger. You went forth for the salvation of your people, even for salvation with your anointed. You wounded the head out of the house of the wicked by discovering the foundation to the neck. Selah. You did strike through with his staves the head of his villages. They came out as a whirlwind to scatter me. The rejoicing was to devour the poor secretly. You did walk through the sea with your horses, through the heap of your great waters. When I heard, my belly trembled, my lips quivered at your voice. Rottenness entered into my bones. I trembled in myself that I might rest in the day of trouble. When he comes up to the people, he will invade with his troops. Verse 17. Although the fig tree shall not blossom, Neither shall fruit be in the vines. The labor of the olive shall fail. And the fields will yield no meat. The flock will be cut off from the fold. And there shall be no herd in the stalls. Verse 18. Yet... I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength. And He will make my feet like hinds feet. And He will make me walk upon my high places. May the Lord add His blessing to the reading and ministry of His Word this morning. Amen. 
I want to preach for you this morning on one ver- one word out of that long passage. The first word of verse 18. Yet. Habakkuk looks at the trouble that is around him. He begins this passage talking about the need for revival for the work of God in the midst of the years. He looks at the greatness of the power of God, the God that created everything. And all of God's glory that covers the earth. And how God was so great in creation that He caused the mountains to scatter into existence at His Word. That the very Word of God caused the rivers to spring forth and the seas to begin to breed life and fish. Habakkuk looks at all of this and says that this great God who was there before there was anything... God who came from nothing because when God existed, nothing else existed. When we look back in the book of Genesis at the beginning of it all, it says, in the beginning, God. Before there was anything else, there was God. Before there was heaven and earth, there was God. Before there were stars in the sky and moon in the sky, there was the Almighty God. In the beginning, God. Before all of it ever started, before the stars began to shine in the night and the earth began to spin and began to orbit before all of it was God. He came from nothing because there was nothing for him, for him to come from. He was there and stood out on nothing because there was nothing for Him to stand on. He spoke to nothing because there was nothing for Him to speak to. And He created all things by the Word of His power. And Habakkuk is looking at this great God. And he's looking at the people of God. And he sees them. He understands that the people of God have experienced many miracles that has brought them to where they're at. They experienced miracles as God called Abraham a stranger out of the land of the Chaldeans and called him to follow him. They experienced many miracles as God kept them as the people of Israel went down into Egypt. They've experienced many miracles as God led them out of Egyptian slavery and brought them through the Red Sea. They've experienced many miracles as this band of slaves conquered the walls of Jericho and the great armies of the day. They've experienced many miracles as David slew the Philistines and the enemies of God and they rise to power and prosperity. They experience many miracles as Solomon erected the temple of God and God's presence and His glory filled the house. Amen. But in spite of all of those miracles, they've fallen. They've fallen away from God. They've fallen into idolatry. They've compromised so much so that you can no longer tell the difference between the people of God and the idolaters of the day. They worship the same idols. Yeah, they worship Jehovah, but they also worship everything else that the people around them worship. And in all of this, Habakkuk says, God, we need You to send revival. Would to God that we recognize that we need revival. We need not just a series of meetings on a few nights, but we need God to show up and to change us back to be the people He has called us to be. We don't need to just be the church as a shell of a religious organization, but we need to be a Pentecostal witness to this community that is filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. Habakkuk said, God, would you revive us? Lord, in the middle 
of the years, somewhere along the way, we've lost our purpose. We've lost our identity. We've lost our power. We've lost our witness. God, would you revive us? God, help us not to let the church go out on a whimper. Let us not see the church that was born in fire and in greatness die a slow death of decay and wilter away. But let us be filled again with the same spirit of Pentecost that birthed this work in this community. Would you revive us in wrath? Remember Mercy in wrath. Anger. The wrath of God. God's wrath does not come for just a long, stretched out period of time. If you look at how God's wrath comes, it's suddenly. It takes a while to get to that point. But when God sends wrath, He doesn't toy around. It isn't stretched out. Sodom and Gomorrah were destroyed in hours. Revelation talks about Babylon destroyed in hours. The flood came and the whole of humanity except for the family of Noah was destroyed in hours. I believe that we as the people of God God is on the brink of wrath with our nation. Hey guys. We stand at the brink of where God could send a wrath and it could happen quickly. I don't want to give away what we're going to be talking about in the prophecy message that series, but we are going to look at Every time the U.S. did something to turn our back or hurt the nation of Israel, judgment has happened quickly. Do you realize that 9-11 happened a few days after we had sided with the Palestinians against Israel? And there's over 20 examples of that. We are on the brink of doing the worst atrocity to the nation of Israel that our nation has ever done. And God may show wrath to America. We can see economies collapse. We can see natural disaster. Who knows? But Habakkuk, when he is in that, 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 that place where he realizes that God's people are on the brink of God's wrath, he says, in wrath, would you remember mercy? God, you may send wrath, but on this community, would you send revival? God may send wrath to the whole of the country, but if we pray and cry out to God and ask God, we might be in the middle of God's wrath all around us. We might be in the midst of the greatest mercy and revival that this community has ever seen. And 
And sometimes it is when God is pouring out wrath all around that there is a hunger and a receptiveness to the gospel and to the mercy and the grace of God. And so as we spend this last hour of the last days, we pray, God, would you send mercy to our families and to our neighbors and to our community. Habakkuk looks and he says, Although the fig tree won't blossom, the figs are having problems, the vines have no grapes, the olive trees don't have any olives, the flocks don't have any meat. And there is no herd in the stall. For somebody that lives their life with an agricultural livelihood, this is devastation. You know, he's got his farm about as diverse as he can. So he grows some figs. And if the figs have a bad year, then maybe the olives do well. If the olives do bad, then maybe the grapes are okay. But if the olives, the grapes, and the figs are all doing bad, well then he's got some livestock and maybe the livestock are okay. But Habakkuk is looking out at the situation and he's got ultimate calamity. The olives aren't doing good. The grapes aren't doing good. The figs aren't doing good. And the flocks are all dead. Have you ever had those kind of problems? The money isn't coming in and the bills are higher. And the car breaks down and a refrigerator needs repair, and a roof is leaking. It's that situation. It's trouble everywhere. Well, if I looked at all the situations, then surely there would be at least one of them that I could cheer myself up about. But he looks at all of them. The pension's gone. The salary's cut. There's no health insurance. All of it is problem. He looks and surveys every area of his life. And maybe it's even worse than just the financial predicament. Maybe he looks and the kids are causing trouble. They won't be quiet on the second pew no matter what you say when you're preaching. <laughs> He's got trouble everywhere. But the secret to Habakkuk. Habakkuk is a prophet that he is ahead of his time. Because Habakkuk is the one that writes the verse that the Apostle Paul bases three chapters in the book of Romans on. It's a little verse in the Old Testament where Habakkuk says, And the just shall live by faith. He understood that we walk by faith and not by sight. That there is some part of this spiritual journey that you cannot compute by looking at all the stuff that is around you. Amen. If you look at the stuff all around you, you'd be like Habakkuk and say, well, the fig tree's not blossoming. The olives aren't, aren't producing. The grapes aren't on the vine. The flocks are all dead. He looked at all of that, but then he has one word that is the secret to walking in victory. He says, yet it is perspective. 
it is whether you look at the trouble or you look at God. Do you see the ordeals that are around you? And just cry about it. Oh, it's me. What am I going to do? Throw a pity party. Get discouraged. Get depressed. Although there's pain in my body. Although there's trouble financially. Although our nation is in the midst of turmoil and rebellion and sin. Although our community hasn't been coming to church. Although this church has, has, has had troubled days and sorrow and many have already written the obituary of this congregation. But although Habakkuk says, yet I will rejoice. There's something about I may have pain in my body. I may have anxiety in my heart. I may have fear in my mind, yet I will praise the Lord. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. You don't write my obituary yet. I'll chase the pallbearers away from the funeral home. God is going to help me and this is not the end of the story. Hallelujah. Yet I will rejoice. Yet I will rejoice. Yet, I will rejoice. Maybe that's the words that we need to utter. Maybe those are the words that you need to let define your life. Don't let the trouble that's around define you. But say, yet, I will rejoice. In spite of it, I'm going to rejoice. In spite of it, I'll still worship God. That's why Habakkuk said, and the just will live by faith. I'm not defined by what I see. I'm defined by what God has promised. I'm not defined by the trouble that's in my checking account. I'm not defined by the trouble that's on my job. I'm not defined by the economy that's around. I'm not defined by the seasons and the weather and the trouble and the turbulence and the sickness and the pain. I am going to be defined by my decision that I will rejoice in the Lord and have faith in Him through it all. Yet, I will rejoice. You know, it's 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 easy to rejoice when there's a tree full of olives. There's more grapes on the vine than you know what to do with. When the herds are fat. When the garden is producing. When the 401k is growing. When you've got a refrigerator full. It's easy to rejoice then. But faith is the yet praise. It is the yet rejoicing that says, God, I worship You in spite of it. You see what he says in verse 19? The Lord God is my strength. I may not have anything else, but God is my strength. I may not have grapes on the vine, but the Lord is my provision. I may not have olives. I may not have figs. But God is my strength. God is strong enough to get me through. 
The Lord is able to get me through. And I'll worship Him in the good times and in the bad. I worship Him when I see prosperity and when I see blessing. And I worship Him through the perseverance of the tribulation because God is strong enough to make me through this. The Lord is my strength. And He says, And the Lord will make my feet like hinds feet. Those animals that were able to climb the steepest, most rugged mountains and could even move quickly a hind so that whenever a stronger, more vicious predator would come after it, all it would do is scale up the steep, rocky mountain where its predator could not follow. Because it was able to climb where its predator couldn't go. And Habakkuk said that the Lord will make my feet like hind's feet. Habakkuk said that He will make me to walk upon high places. That God will help me to scale the heights where my enemy can't chase me. That there is a place where even when there's trouble and there is a pursuit of a vicious predator, that God is able to give you the strength and the ability to go higher. That where you're right now, it may be dangerous. But God is able to let you walk higher than you think you can walk. You're in the middle of a struggle, but God is able to lift you up that you can sit together with Christ in heavenly places. That you're able to go higher on that mountain. And what you think you can't stand on, the Lord's given you hinds feet. And where you think you might fall, His grace will enable you to stand. And Habakkuk said that the Lord is my strength and that He gives me feet like hind's feet and makes me to go to the high places. In the middle of the trouble, there is a way to be lifted out of it. And that is to rejoice your way above it. Amen. You can stay looking at the trouble around. You can lift up your eyes and look to the Lord and rejoice in Him. Put your sight not on the trouble that's around, not on the pain that's in your body, not on the struggle that's in your life, but put your eyes and say, the Lord is my strength. I will rejoice in you. I'll take joy, not in what I've got on the vine, but in the God who is my strength. We'll see if they listen this time. Habakkuk says, yet, I will rejoice. The trouble is there. But will you decide that you look at it? I almost wonder when we pray if we're just talking to God about all the trouble instead of saying yes. I will rejoice. God, I don't know what you're up to, but you're my strength. Lord, I don't know about all this wrath and this judgment and all this trouble that's around, but Lord, You are my strength. And I will rejoice 
in you. Brother Fess told me that it's all about perspective. Said he feels like a 16 year old that's been run over by a Mack truck. <laughs> but it's all about perspective. Do we have yet? I will praise. Yet, I will rejoice. The trouble is bad, but it ain't killed as yet. Amen. The pain is bad, but we're still here to fight through it. The struggle is real, but we will rejoice in God by faith. Would you bow your heads and close your eyes?